Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Well, the bed sides are done, the wheel wells are done, and the floor is coming up soon. So, now I guess it's time to do some more metal work. And that includes this little space right here, a little bit of this square stock, and some flat bar, and that bad boy right there. It's time to get it out of the cab and get it uh, back in under the frame. So my plan is to put the fuel cell in under the bed with no exposed parts at all, far enough down that I can make an extension for my filler thing. <laughs> the, I don't know what you call it, the cap. So I'll make an extension up to the bed so that that's the only thing that'll be visible. And you can just flip the lid, pull it off and everything will be nice and flush and flat. I thought about just bolting it right to the floor, but I thought it looked kind of tacky. So I can still put some stuff in the back of it if I do it this way. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but well, I'm on a trend of trying to do everything as correctly as I can, so why not? So what I'm gonna do is run, there's two stringers across the frame in the front and the back of the fuel cell and then make a couple straps. And for that, I have some inch wide, eighth inch thick flat bar. It's just this, it was like a dollar 30 a foot and I'll just bend it so that it sits sort of in a carriage and then I can bolt the top straps on and it'll be nice and secure and safe. And I'm gonna do it so that the fuel cell itself is level and there's a spot on the bottom like a sump that's sort of tilted down a little bit further. So that's where the inlets for the fuel lines go. Just so everybody knows, I won't be welding around gas fumes. I've got this one taped off with like 10, tire, 10 layers of um, electrical tape and some caps put on here. If I had more caps, I would have just used that one. And I'm gonna tape off that vent. That vent doesn't leak fumes out, but it does allow air in, so I'll just tape that off anyway to be sure. Magic! Now I've got a bucket put down here that I'm thinking it might be around the correct height. So let's check it out. Let's see what we got. I have all the gas drained out of this. I put it all into a five gallon can and it's uh, out of the way well out of the way so let's see that might have to go that way i'm probably going to have to cut these tabs off i wasn't going to bother because they're not really in the way but they uh, they're a bit tight yep thing will work because i need to weld the bars across here so i'll cut those off now so that i don't have a bunch of sparks going around here when i got fuel cell in but I think it's around the correct point anyway. This needs to be on the correct angle now. I'm going to level it up so that the tank itself is actually level and not tipped this way or that way to ensure my float is going to be correct. But that actually looks pretty good right there. And that's just, you know, laid in place. But we can see that the fuel vent is the highest part right now. And that's not up near the bottom of the frame or the top of the frame at all so it's not going to be near the bottom of the wood my feed of course is going to be back here and i'll turn that so it goes up and here is my uh return one of these here doesn't really matter which and i am running dual pumps so i'll be using two of these feeds one will go this way one will go around and go that way and the pumps would be situated like up here somewhere. Well, there are those old tabs. That was what I had the bed bolted to the frame with before. And now we got lots of space. Good. Well, it was a good idea. It was a good, it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, that looks really good. It's not gonna touch the frame or the floor or anything. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna, oh, oh. Yeah, and it's not quite low enough yet. <laughs> that, yeah, that does not work. Well, that ain't gonna work. That's really, really low. That's low enough for me to go, okay, the front of a cobalt can probably fit under there and then go smack. 
or a Nissan Altima. Big Altima energy. That it, man, I thought it was gonna work too. It looked so cool. It looked so cool. Well, okay. Back to square one. So I think the only thing that I can see me doing is putting the fuel cell up high enough <coughs> so that my fuel lines can sneak just in under this bar, which I had to go up probably six inches or more, and then they can still kick off and go that way. And it'll be protected by this big chunk of iron. That's a big piece of C-channel. It's probably 40 pounds or more. So if anybody hits that, I know I'm comfortable it's not going anywhere. And it's not going to hit these fuel lines. Hmm. But it's going to be way up here, up into the floor of my pan. And it's going to be a bit of an eyesore. But hey, this whole truck lowers property values when I drive through nice neighborhoods. So what more is a little fuel cell going to do in the pan? Yeah, that's it. Well, I guess now I don't have to make an extension for this thing because it's going to be up high enough anyway. Hmm, okay. Still makes me sad. Getting ready to make the bars up to go across here that I'll mount the fuel cell to. And I'm gonna use this. It is, I'll say 16th wall or so. I had to grind off a couple tabs that they had welded on here. That was actually frames from uh, side-by-sides and snowmobiles and stuff like that, ATVs from All-Star across the road. That was the frames that the new vehicles come in and they gave me a bunch of that stuff left over. Which is gonna work awesome here. It's not too heavy. There's no need to have eighth inch wall or anything like that just to hold up a couple gallons of fuel. Gonna grab my tape. And because the uh, fuel cell is gonna be sticking up anyway, I'll just mount it pretty much flush with the top here and I'll be able to bolt the fuel cell on. So let's do right there. We come across and we got 27 inches. And back here, we're at the same. So we got 27 inches there. So I'll make the two spanners go across here and I'll probably set them down maybe uh, an inch or something like that just to be sure that it's not gonna interfere with the wood that's gonna be right here. And I'll cut those out now. cleaned up on the four corners pretty much where I expect the bars are going to be might not be quite right on and I also tapered the cuts on this one bar because uh, the frame here is kind of at an angle where it's wider on the bottom so I'm just going to pop that one down there and I'll level this up all the That's about there. That one goes about right here somewhere. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this now to see exactly where it's going to be or to get an idea of where it's going to be. I should be using a hammer for this. My hands are going to hurt later. <laughs> Okay, it fits pretty well right there. The reason I've got it down on its flat here instead of vertical is because I'm going to be putting bolts through it and it'd be a lot easier to drill down through an inch and a half wide than it would be through the half inch wide. Just make it a little bit easier on me and I can set my height with the bottom bands that I'm gonna make. But, that looks pretty good right there. 
like that. I'll make sure it's all square and everything, and then I'll tack it in. Progress report. So these are square this way, all that way. And, huh, I lost the nut that I had. Here it is. So I used this to make sure that it was level. And the way I did that was I laid that here and I grabbed a hammer and I went tap, tap, tap until it didn't go down anymore on the frame. I did the same thing right here. Just kind of tap the frame until this bottomed out. And then I did the same thing right there. So I tapped it until it was flush with this piece of frame. And then the same thing right there. So trying to read these measuring tapes that are all kinked to bits and mostly covered up. Try to measure that to a half inch is kind of annoying. So I'll use something that won't change like a nut. This, ready to go. Now I just got to set my height, level up the fuel cell, which I'm going to need my phone for so I can't video. And uh, then I'll start making the strips to go around it. Now that I know it fits, I'm going to go ahead and tack these in. I don't know if you could tell from the time lapse there. Uh, I'm trying not to make this video too long with pointless stuff. But what I did was had the fuel cell laid in place, leveled up on that. And then I took tape and ran it across the fuel cell right at the top of those bars. On the front and the rear. Then I measured from the bottom of the tape down and got my perimeter back up to here. Which is seven inches, 16 inches, six and a half inches, which came to 29 and a half. No, 29 and a quarter, six and a quarter inches. Anyway, so that is the overall length that I need my flat bar to be. I'll add on an inch just because, well, you know, there's always a chance to mess it up. So when I get that bent up, all I need to do is lay it right down in the spot Give it a couple quick tacks, lay the fuel cell down in, make sure it's good. Pull that back out because that's basically a bomb now. There's no gas in it, just fumes. And then I can weld it up. Woohoo! I know I need a lapel mic and this is not ideal, but I will order one. I have had many suggestions now on that I should do that. So I'm just going to do this real time for one and see how it goes. So right here is a six and a quarter. So I'm going to go six and three quarters. That's a good edge. And I'll just bend it in the vise. So six and three quarters is right there. And this is nothing serious. It's all just 90 degree bends. I'm going to do it that way. Given the extra half inch, it gives me a bit of wiggle room in case I need to make a change or if it's not quite long enough. And to make sure you get a straight bend, I made sure to have my flat bar level with the top of the vise right here so that when I pull it back, I'm going to pull back completely straight and level and it's not going to be like a twisted bend like this. Now that's exaggerated, but we want it to be a nice straight level 90. <clears throat> so that looks decent. I'm sure it's not absolutely perfect. And there are better ways to do this, but it'll work. And, huh, it actually looks really good. Let's just bring this over here really quick so we can have a look at it. There we go. Might not be absolutely perfect, but dude, that will work just fine for me. And I'll just check out the 
angle that needs to be right here. I can pretty much just freehand this one. So I'll measure from my mark back to here to make sure that it's 16 inches. And we're about 15 and 3 quarters, so I'm going to go with the 16. It doesn't matter if it's a little tiny bit loose. I just moved it up a little tiny bit past my mark there. Make sure that's level. And now, you want to pull back as straight as you can. You want to pull down. Now, this is not a break, obviously, by any means. It's just a bench base, but... And because steel has a bit of spring to it, you want to pull it a bit past 90 degrees and then let it spring back to the 90 that it wants to be. So, that actually looks kind of cool. That rarely works the first time. For me, anyway. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> and somehow, see, it never works the first time. Well, we might have to flatten it back out again and rebend it. All right, somehow that just did not work at all. I've got, man, it's got to be an inch. That's crazy. Wild. Well, let's flatten it out. No harm in starting over again, or at least backtracking. Nice thing again, this is not structural. Uh, so where am I going? I'm going to go back this way a bit further. Uh, that is level. This is not structural, so it's not a big deal if I bend it a little bit more. Just a couple little lump cuts. Let's see what we got now. Oops. Hit the floor. Look at that. It holds on its own. That's great. Now, because I left it a half inch longer, it's basically the perfect length. If I didn't, it'd be down here. And now, this is really awkward to hold. Wow. I can just make my mark right there, cut that off, weld it in place, and I'll just make this one again. Easy peasy. Okay, now that I've got my straps made, I'm going to center the fuel cell and then mark on this um, bar where they need to be. So this is 27 inches wide. This is 17 and a half inches wide. So we should have five and a quarter on each side, I think. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but or four and three quarters. I can't math right now. <clears throat> so size four and three quarters. Four and a half. I just want to get it as centered as I possibly can. Do it from the top of the camera. Four and a half there. Four and three quarters. What? If I can get it pretty much. Four and five eighths, four and five eighths, four and five eighths, and four and five eighths. Woo! So we got a center. So the center of where the strap is going to go, I'm going to measure the center on the bar. And then I'll see if from the center of 
out to the frame and the center out to the frame. I'll see if they're the same. That way I'll know if my measurements are correct. I'm sure there's a much easier way of doing this than what I'm doing, but I like to complicate things apparently. Nine inches, nine inches. Nine back there, and nine right there. So we're right on the money. And now all I need to do is lay these down in place, obviously under the fuel cell. I don't want to tack it with this here because, like I said, kaboom. Uh, but this will do it for me. And now the shorter side has to go toward the rear. No, sorry, the shorter side has to go toward the front. I did it right, I just said it wrong. Because that'll allow the back of the tank to sit down further. I've got to kind of explain this to myself out loud. Well, I thought I hit the record button, but apparently I didn't. So what I did was took my clamp, clamped it on here with the piece right in the center of the line. You can see a little bit of that left. And before I tacked it, I put my square right here and made sure that each part was square before I tacked it so that it's not going to be kicked over like this or whatever. And this is not real hot. So let's do a quick test fit. Let's see what we got. Hey, I don't hate that at all. Hmm. That's just fine. Okay, with the fuel cell in its current position, <laughs> you can see it looks like it's kicked up a lot, but the truck is not level. The fuel cell is now. So let's see. Oh, that looks so much better. That is absolutely perfect. That's much better. Now my fuel lines can come off here. I've got like piles of room between the frame and the fuel lines and everything. They'll only come out there probably a half inch and kick off there. And the fuel pumps will go maybe right here somewhere. I wasn't holding very level. It's like, ooh. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll hang the fuel pumps off of these straps or something. So that will that will absolutely work there. Much better. So now I can go ahead and make my top straps. All I need to do is make it flat right here, kick it up, flat across the back, down, out to here, and then drill two holes, bolt it on. I want to make sure that my suspension straps are fully secured. I'm never going to need to pull the tank down through. That doesn't matter. Um, if I have to, if there's not enough room, I'll lift my boards off my floor and then I can pull the fuel cell out that way. But there should be no reason because my pumps are going to be outside the tank. My float is on top. My lines are going to be on top. There should be no reason at all unless I need to remove the tank to change it or get rid of it no reason for me to take it out so that's good let's make up two of these straps and see what we get i got a few pretty peculiar bends to do on this one two inches two inches 16 inches three inches there's a lot but that's not too serious i don't mind if it's a little bit shorter or a little bit longer that's not really a big deal because I bought a little bit extra which is always good I thought I'd need about 10 feet so I bought 12 I'm hoping that's going to be enough if not I'll pick up another couple feet another couple feet tomorrow yeah there's my hammer I always bend it the wrong way. I gotta put it over on this side. I'm hoping to have the truck on the go very soon. There's a lot of car shows coming up that I want to be 
car shows or burnout competitions, racing, whatever it is. I don't care as long as it's car stuff. So there is my bottom flange that's going to bolt to the bars. And I need two inches. It's a bit longer than it needs to be, but it's not too bad. Here's where it's going to get awkward. I'm trying to get all this to bend correctly with the voice. Another little trick I learned is if you're bending this way on a voice, grab a square and put up against the material. Square it up in the voice first. That way, when you go and pull down on it, it should be pretty well right on. Give it a few whacks and now I've got my Z bar, I don't know what you call it. I have no idea. Me. So now this one. This is not a whole lot of work. Once you figure out your angles. Making sure everything's square is, is the main thing. And I try to pull on it as hard as I can so that it doesn't get like a real round radius. And then you can knock the square in with a hammer on the edge of the vice. It's too long. Sweet. Well, I mean, it's too long to get an accurate measurement. So I'll call that two and three quarters down. I don't have a whole lot of work to do left, left to do on this now. Mostly, my biggest thing now is wiring, which has always been a bit of a nemesis of mine. I don't mind wiring, I really don't. It's just a big undertaking. But, when you're building a whole truck, everything is a big undertaking. <laughs> A little bit twisty. And not that. That is so cool. I can't believe it's working. So now I'm just going to cut that one off. Respirator on, but for that one little cup, I'm gonna bother. Just added time. All right, just recreate the second one, and, and then basically done.
got the holes drilled and the nuts and bolts picked out that needs to be there. So I'm not going to bolt this in yet. I know everything is lined up and it works. So I'm going to go ahead and weld these four pieces up and my two straps in under and then we'll bolt it on. Man, I even went and painted it. Wow. That looks mint. It almost looks like I didn't make it. That's my favorite part. They're painted up. It looks really good. I'm happy with it. So while I'm waiting to paint that up, I thought I might as well put some exhaust on this, this, this uh, thing. Because it comes out right there. And I imagine that's not helping my part throttle stutter any at all. So I'm going to add on one foot of pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm just gonna put on a piece of pipe to come like back right here somewhere, slant, cut it, weld it on, paint it black. Done. So while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I'll just throw it on time lapse and we'll see if we can make this thing sound cool. <laughs> well the barbecue paint is still a little bit wet it's drying as we speak well that's enough shenanigans let's get back to the truck stuff i think i put the camera on like the most awkward angle possible <laughs> i was like oh yeah i'll just put it over sort of on the side of the truck it'll be great all right over there This is gonna be deadly. I don't know how to get this on the bottom, but whatever. Man, this is so cool. I'm like legitimately excited to have the fuel cell back in the pan again. Absolutely perfect. Well, I gotta say, that looks really, really good. Everything's all bolted in. Now I just need to run all my fuel lines and everything. And I'll do that after I get the floor of the pan all done, everything all put in, bolted in, I'll run my fuel lines later on, wiring the fuel pumps, make the brackets and all that fun stuff. I got a bit of work to do. But for now, I'm gonna shut her down because I gotta go pick my girls up and go get some supper and work tomorrow. But another major check mark off the list the long list of stuff to get this thing on the road. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks all the new subscribers and my YouTube members and patrons. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods and the YouTube members link is down here. And also check out my uh, available merch on my Teespring store, which the link is in the description. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.